fill is an on-demand gas station. And effectively what that means is we bring the gas station to you. Um, so we, uh, we were founded about 18 months ago now. Um, and th the model and the idea originally was could we find a way to not have to go to a gas station instead of bring it to places where people already are. People's cars sit for the majority of the day and they're in one place. So instead of making the real estate and the, uh, the time play that it takes for every customer to have to go to a gas station, if there was a way to actually bring that to you where your car was, it seemed like one, it would be a lot more efficient, and two, it would provide customers a better experience. So what we built out early on was an app, and, and this is actually our second model now, our, our 2.0 version. Um, and effectively, it, it operates very similar to an Uber to a lot of these on-demand services. You're going to drop a pin. Surprise, there we go. Um, you're going to drop a pin wherever your car is. Um, so customers will go and, and say, we're right here at, at 200 Matilda. Um, it's going to show you the price at this location. So the way we calculate that is it's based on the average of the five nearest gas stations. So we crunch that data uh, provided by Opus and uh, Oil Pricing Index Service, and then effectively average those for this spot. And the reason we do that, we feel like gas needs to be transparent in its pricing. It's something that tends to be uh, very closely monitored by the consumer, so we want to make sure it was nice and clear that it was going to be the average price of what's nearby. Um, in addition to that, we had a small fee. So that ranges between zero, in certain cases, and five dollars. Um, and that's effectively the, the delivery fee. I'll walk through an order here so you guys can see a little bit of how this works. So if I'm, if I'm at this location, I'm going to press get fill, the bottom button there in the center. Um, and then it's going to ask me for my car. So when you onboard in the app, it allows you to input multiple cars, as many as you'd like, actually. Um, so my Toyota Camry happens to be here tonight. So I'm going to place an order for that. As that's going, a few of the other uh, onboarding aspects that you're going to use are you're going to have to input your payment info, similar to most of the on-demand apps, you put your vehicle info. That's effectively make model of the car, the color of the car, and those sorts of things so you can find it. Um, then what's going to pop up is your delivery window option. So up here you see tonight you have a late evening window, that's 9 p.m. to 1 a.m. Uh, people tend to use that window while they're at home. So they've gotten home from the day, their day's over, they leave their gas flap cracked open in their driveway or in their carport, they head on in and then we get them filled up between those hours. Um, you're also going to have an after dinner window that one is a, a little bit of a smaller window. So you see that the second window down um, is 9 to 11. So we've broken that into a bite sized chunk. That one has a $5 delivery fee. The longer window gives us a little more flexibility to come to you, so that's a $3 window. Um, and then tomorrow there's a variety of, uh, of windows as well. Um, let's say I'm going to get filled tonight while I'm here, which we do have a truck out there. So if you guys would like gas while you're here, uh, just drop a pin, download the app, drop a pin, register. Um, make sure your gas stops open. That's the one piece that, that we need for you to do. Um, beyond that, we can get you filled out. So say I'm going to do that, I, uh, you'll select this window, the, the 9 p.m. top window. We'll fill it out before you leave tonight. I'm going to pop that through. Um, and then it's going to tell me kind of an order summary. So it's going to allow me to check, make sure I pick the right car. It's going to tell me what time I schedule the delivery for. And then there's notes. We've seen this be used for a variety of things, everything from I'm on the second level of the parking structure to please fill up my five gallon gas can, I need gas for my lawnmower tomorrow morning. Uh, so customers put a variety of things in there. Uh, you're going to place the delivery fee, or place the order, excuse me. It's going to remind you to open up your gas pot, give you a confirmation, and then you're just going to go ahead and finish the order in the top right. Um, and the theory here effectively is twofold. One, if we can provide gas to you at a location where your car is going to be, there needs to be less gas stations. So at the end of the day, gas stations are expensive pieces of real estate. They're corner, uh, corner real estate on the busiest streets. If we can remove, reduce that, make it a little more efficient both for the gas station in the, in, the, in the sense that because we bring it to you, we can be more efficient with our equipment, and the fact that we actually make it more efficient for the customer, we believe that um, it, it brings a benefit to both sides of the equation there. Um, ultimately, the other fun fact about this business is because gasoline is a volume business, as it scales, the margins get better and better. And so with that, we've actually already been able to reduce our delivery fee from seven to our standard is now five. We're hoping to get that down further to where it's the same price of gas um, to where to where it can be. So there's no actual uh, markup there. A few other aspects of the app, you can check your orders. You see I have a pending order there for the Toyota Camry that I just placed. You also see all the previous orders that happened to have placed in this account. Um, and that's kind of where you get your receipts. So if you click in the one, you're going to see kind of the, you're going to effectively see how much gas was filled, um, what the price was at that location. So this particular order a couple days ago happened to be, I got 87 octane gas, I got it at 266 a gallon, I got 15, uh, almost 16 gallons. That gives me my total, my delivery fee, and then the total cost of the order on that one actually. 
Ah, there you go. Um, <laughs> that's yeah, so that's going to give you kind of your order transaction. We also email or receipt to you after the fact. So that comes in under your inbox and you can check that way as well. Um, any questions? Yeah. Regulations and taxes. Yeah, great question. Um, so there's a lot of regulations in this space. Uh, both kind of on a federal level, there's a fair number of regulations. The way we deliver is with a pickup truck. Um, and so what that allows us to do is make sure that we're regulated to the degree of a pickup truck, but not necessarily a big tanker truck. So we want to make sure that pulling into your neighborhood at night isn't going to scare the neighbors. Uh, so it's a Ford F-250 pickup truck. It's got 400 gallons of gas in the back, um, and it's pretty low profile. Um, on a local regulation standpoint, you're also dealing with kind of fire, uh, fire marshals is a big one on a local level. Something that we talk with each fire marshal before we launch an area. Right now, our coverage is San Jose after Redwood City. We're going to be launching San Francisco in a few weeks, so we've already started the process of checking in with the, the uh, regulatory bodies up there. Taxes on that aspect, taxes are fully baked into the app, um, so the price you see is a, is a price that we pay the taxes on. You're not having to have uh, any taxes added. So that means you have to deal with the 75 taxing jurisdictions within four feet of This is true. So we do actually have to know where we deliver that fuel. We get taxed on a local jurisdiction, and our back end automatically calculates that jurisdiction's tax price. Questions? Yeah. How much gas are you delivering a month? Yeah, so we don't actually talk about specific numbers right now. We've got thousands of users, um, and then we also have a lot of kind of B2B deals as well. So there's fleets that need this service, so we'll fill, we've got one fleet deal, we've done a couple hundred thousand gallons. Um, the average gas station is about 80,000 gallons a month, um, and we're, we're well past that at this point, we're going to kind of move in the, in the positive direction. So again, it's a volume business, so the more you grow, the better that margin gets over time. Yeah. Is there any deal for anybody who's here tonight? There is, so Ward sent that question out. Um, he's got a stack of flyers. There's $10 off gas tonight. So if you do want to place an order tonight, uh, grab one of these flyers from Ward. He's in the back, uh, and he can, uh, he can get you that discount for tonight. So each one of your trucks carries a mix of regular premium? Yeah, so we, great question. So we carry premium 91 and 87. Um, Costco is kind of the one who pioneered the model of not carrying mid grade 89. Uh, mid grade is less than 1% of the market nationwide. So again, from an efficiency standpoint, it just makes sense for us to carry the, the high and the low. Diesel is something we're going to be adding soon. Where do you get your oil? Uh, where do we buy gas? Yeah, yeah. So we buy at wholesale. So we're able to buy in the same way that a gas station buys, and we pick up at a variety of commercial fuel stations. Yeah. So do you see any value adds on top of delivering gas? Definitely. Because that's such a low margin business. It is. It really is. To see you get yeah, so the, the key is we do improve the margins by removing the real estate. So that's, mm -hmm. the, that's the, the big play long term. Mm -hmm. But with that, there are a lot of value add, uh, value -add services. One of the things Gordon and I are talking about on our way over here. Um, there's partnerships potentially with companies like Door Mechanic, Safe Flight, uh, replacing windshields. Those sorts of partnerships are interesting as well. One of the things that a couple of the car, the car manufacturers we've started talking with have seen. Um, we talk with them a little bit about the connected car future, but what they've mentioned in the short term is we have the most frequent touch point with our customer's vehicle. So an oil change happens every 90 days, uh, you know, brakes or tires are more, more infrequently than that. So if we're able to check in pretty regularly, that data and the value that services become interesting with all of those, and then reminding the customer, hey, the tires are really low, you may want to fill them up, you may want to get new tires, et cetera. So yes. Yeah. Gas stations switch up money off the mini mark. How do you know the mini mark? Yeah, so that's, that's something we talk a lot about. Um, ultimately, if we can, because we remove the real estate piece, we don't need the mini mart to make the margin. We make the margin through the trucks. Three trucks can fulfill about one gas station's worth of, worth of gas. The reason that is is because we can flatten the demand. The gas station needs 12 pumps so that at 5 p.m. when everyone's on their way home, they have enough pumps for everyone. The other 22 hours a day, most of those pumps are actually empty. So what we're able to do is you don't actually need gas at that moment. You need it before you get in your car the next time. So we're able to, with some of the smaller delivery fees and, and pricing adjustments, we're able to shift demand into wider windows overnight when we can fill and the customer can be asleep while we fill their car. So ultimately, we don't think we need the mini mark long term, but people have asked us if we could drop off a stick that pack of gum while we're there and figure it out now. <laughs> How do you think the manufacturers of gas stations, pumps, uh, I work for a big company like that, how do you think they will respond to you? Yeah, so that's a great question and we've gotten a lot. So ultimately the, the big oil companies, Shell, Chevron, etc., are in the refining of the fuel business. So they actually, whereas their brand is on most of the fuel stations at local sites, those are franchisors of the bigger company. 
as long as the gas is being sold to a retail customer, they complain a little bit less. We thought early on that they would kind of raise some red flags and be frustrated if we started to grow. As we've grown, they've actually been more interested in partnering, finding ways to give fuel supply and, and make sure we're buying from them as opposed to other competitors. So at the end of the day, the fuel sells into the, into the customer's hands. They're happy because they've made their share on refining the gas of the pipeline. Thank you, Phil.